Hello, this is Dave here, and today we're taking a look at a game that's sure to bring back memories for those who grew up gaming back in the late 80s and early 90s. This is the new Shadow of the Beast on PlayStation 4, which is basically a remake of the original Amiga game. So the developers have taken the original gameplay and somewhat modernised it. The combat system is massively improved, and of course we're looking at vastly superior visuals, which takes advantage of some of the latest visual effects available on the PlayStation 4 hardware. Now the original was something of a technical demonstration for the hardware of its time. Developed by Reflections and published by Psygnosis, the main draw of the game was its ability to push up to 12 layers of parallax scrolling on screen. The original has poor collision detection and very few moves. It's simply not a very good game to play and it's brutally difficult. The difficulty of course remains in this PlayStation 4 version, but this time the gameplay is actually pretty solid. We have a range of different moves and combos for the main character, and these all flow together very smoothly. There are different counters we can pull off at different times, and special attacks. Compared to the original, a lot of thought's been put into how the remake on PS4 plays, and the visuals have also been modernised to create a more dynamic gameplay experience too. So for example, the camera constantly moves around and in and out of the environment, showcasing different focal points. On top of that, the story is fleshed out via the use of cutscenes. These aren't particularly deep or complex, but it moves the action along in a logical fashion. However, it's the visuals which really stand out here. The Amiga original was renowned for being a tech demo for the system, and this serves as an inspiration for the PS4 version. The original game was all about parallax scrolling, but in the PlayStation 4 version, physically based rendering and per pixel lighting takes point, with HDR effects, bloom, and multiple light sources cast across the environment. The rendering setup here really gives the game a distinctive look. Surfaces appear pretty authentic, but at the same time, the distinct glow by the game's lighting is fitting for an alien world, which kind of sits somewhere between sci-fi and medieval influences. The artwork is also pretty respectful to the original as well, with many of the iconic mountains and trees being redone with new visuals. It doesn't look exactly the same, but fans will definitely appreciate this. On top of that, we also see the inclusion of a high quality Bokka depth of field effect, combined with camera and object motion blur, which helps to give the presentation a distinct cinematic look. Overall then, Shadow of the Beast is respectful to the source material, but brings things up to date for modern hardware quite nicely and it's also targeting 60 frames per second as well. It's generally impressive stuff for a small indie production, which consisted of just seven people developing this game over a three year period. So with that said, are there any compromises? Well, the game actually renders in 900p, but to be honest, this isn't such a big deal. While the game lacks the raw sharpness we see from a native full HD presentation, scaling artifacts aren't really an issue, and overall image quality is actually pretty decent. And of course, on the plus side, the game does run at 60 frames per second, and does so frequently. This keeps gameplay feeling nice and consistent, and indeed during boss battles and when there are larger enemies on screen, performance is rarely impacted. Where we do see frame rates take a small hit though, is when there are lots of enemies on screen in combination with alpha effects. Here we're looking at drops down to around the mid 50s, and this creates slight judder on screen along with a mild reduction in controller response. It's definitely noticeable while playing, but it's not that much of a deal breaker. These moments don't occur that often and the frame rate quickly resolves itself, going back to delivering a solid 60 FPS, and that's exactly what we want from a game like this. So overall, Shadow of the Beast on PlayStation 4 is a solid reimagining of the original game. The gameplay has been brought up to date nicely, and from a visual perspective, the use of complex rendering effects actually makes the game stand out and really suits the sci-fi, medieval style setting. So in closing, if you have fond memories of the original Shadow of the Beast on the Amiga, Mega Drive, or one of the other ports of the game, then it's worth checking out this PlayStation 4 remake. It's not exactly the same game that you know, but it's something a little different, and it is pretty respectful to the source material. You can see here that the developers took the ideas and influences in the original game and put their own spin on it. It's not going to blow anyone away, but it's a solid release for fans that perhaps want something inspired by 16-bit gaming, but with a more modern twist. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and remember to subscribe if you want to support Digital Foundry. This has been Dave, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.